Welcome to Get the Intel, presented by Lamin in Coaching. This podcast is your go-to for straightforward advice and stories from the construction industry. Join us as we talk with contractors who share their experiences and experts who offer practical tools and techniques to help your business run smoother. Whether you're looking to solve a problem or simply seeking inspiration, we're here to help you manage your work and enjoy life. Tune in for insights that matter to you. My name is Chad Gill, and I'm the host of the Get the Intel podcast, where I talk with leaders in construction, contracting, management, and really anyone helping us do business better. This episode is brought to you by Lamin and Coaching. Lamin is a business coaching company with a focus on contractors in and around construction. We not only help you with proposing solutions and methods, but implementing them as well. Because after all, good ideas are not useful until they're implemented. So if you're ready to see what we can do for you, have a look at our website at laminincoach.com to see our full range of service. Well, joining me today is David Poole. He is a seasoned professional with over 29 years of experience. David has been leading JP Specialty since 2008, demonstrating exceptional leadership and expertise. He was the secretary of the ACI 350 Environmental Engineering Concrete Structures Subcommittee for Hazardous Materials and Tightness Testing from 2008 to 2022. He's also the author of the newly released Hazardous Material Containment in Concrete Structures and The Little Book of Water Stop, the latter being freely available for download. An active public speaker, David's engineering seminars are highly sought after by top engineering firms nationwide, and his extensive experience and expertise make him a leading authority in the field of concrete structures and environmental engineering. David, thanks for coming on. I'm really curious about how the uh, naming of this little book of water stops went. I mean, is that a knockoff of the uh, little shop of horrors or or, or what? (laughs) It had water stops as we know them today have been around since 1954. And interestingly enough, you could not find a book. There was nothing uh, in 2013. Um, at that point where I decided to write the book, there was nothing. I had nothing to grab for, nothing to pass on to employees or to tell a new employee to read or or what have you. It just didn't exist. I thought, okay, I'll put it out there. We'll make it free. And, and I'm going to try and keep it small so people can get the facts, but they don't have to go through 400 pages to get the facts. So I think it clocks in at right around like 113 pages or something. It's short, it's small, um, but it has had a big impact. People like it, it's concise. And to this day, even though I put it out there, um, nobody else has stepped up to the plate. It is still the only book in this niche little subject of water stop. So JP Specialties, is that purely water stops, containment? Um, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out if water stops, I guess is part of a containment structure or focus big time on just water stops actually it's one of the things that kind of delineates us from our our competitors we don't do anything but water stop uh, all of our extrusion lines just water stop only um we try and be basic in every industry we serve that means we make every single part um that comes out of our our facility we don't offshore and or or off source and and bring stuff in from overseas it is all made right here in uh myriad california so how does it so how does water stopping or water stops you know are these i guess kind of give me a a rundown i know you've got a new product that you're doing but let's get a rundown of just kind of like the general options of what a water stop is and where you use it two broad classes uh there's hydrophobic which basically means you're going to resist water a good example of a hydrophobic uh surface would be a wax car hood you spray your car down when you're washing it you're if you take your care of your car and you love it it's going to beat up and it's going to push all the water right off the trunk or the hood um because you got a nice coat of wax which is a, a hydrophobe there's another class of water stuff that are called hydrophilics and they go in the exact same or they do things exactly the opposite of the hydrophobes instead of repelling water 
they absorb water. And the term hydrophilic, it literally means water loving. And I always tell people it expresses its love by swelling. That's that's what it's going to do. So what you're relying with the hydrophilic is uh, to seal a construction joint. And it's real important that they only use that in construction joints. No contraction, no expansion. Both would give you big problems. Um, the hydrophobic can be used across full spectrum, above grade, below grade, moving, non-moving, et cetera, et cetera, um, has a lot less restrictions. The hydrophobic is significantly um, more difficult to install properly. The hydrophilic is exceptionally easy for a contractor in the field to literally glue it to the side of a cold joint and cast up against it. That's what you're seeing in the field when you're seeing them, you know, they're, you're going to put a wall on a foundation, stick this, you know, sticky back, that, uh, ribbon down, and then pour on top of it. So the water that it's loving and it's taken in and causing it to swell, is that from the wet concrete that's being poured or sure. waiting for water to leak in, seals it as the leak is getting to it? It's going to be both. Um, most products today that are, are manufactured in the hydrophilic sense they have generally about a two to three day um, cure period. It, once that water starts coming out of the concrete, you know, and you've got a 28 day, probably a cure cycle where most of the water is going to leave the concrete in those, those first 28 days. Um, this type of product is going to absorb that water and it will swell. And that's what you have to be careful with. Some of the brands that are out there, use exceptionally high levels of hydrophilic agents in their mix. So if a contractor places the, the water sub too close to the, the face of the concrete, it can literally blow out. I mean, it can really be an ugly failure. Most manufacturers require anywhere from two to three inches of concrete coverage on all sides of a hydrophilic. Um, there is a manufacturer out there that says you have to have a double row mat and eight inches of concrete clear cover because they put so much sodium bentonite in their product. Now you said it can't have any expansion or contraction. To me, I would feel like, oh, well, it's under pressure. If it expands a little bit, then it'll expand to fill the void or it contracts. will just compress it. And I guess that's not the case. Traction joint, you're generally going to come in with a saw cut, right? Well, that, yeah. the water stop in place <laughs> that would do it that would that would do it. <laughs> it'd be tough um the construction joint is a non-moving joint you should have bar going through it um an expansion joint is designed for movement be it lateral or transverse or even shear um that joint is going to be moving and those type of products are not that resilient they will tear uh if they're place under stress you can pull them apart with your hand uh with a hydrophobic product you, you could never pull it apart i mean it's just really really strong our products go from 2100 psi to 2300 psi and so they're really tough and rigid and you can't hurt them so you can throw them into an expansion joint and when you get that lateral movement um the bulb in the center can contract onto itself. So you're not even stressing the polymer. Once you get past the, the inner diameter of the uh, annulus on that bulb, now you're stretching the polymer. But again, um, these type of products are made for this. And we have 530% ultimate elongation on our most robust polymer and 380% ultimate elongation on the uh, more economical polymer. Oh. So hydrophilic, I understand uh, that's that's the one that we're sticking down in the form work and pouring concrete on. Correct. Should what's, have a piece of paper on one side. And, absolutely. Yeah. What's an example of the other one? The other one is basically an internal dam. Um, that's what I like to think of. It's either a, an internal dam or an internal diaphragm, however you want to think of it. Generally, it's an extruded profile, anywhere from four to nine inches in width. So what you want to do is the bigger 
the hydrostatic head pressure, the bigger the water stop that you want to use. We've got a convenient little chart on our website that your, your contractors can look at. Um, it will literally show them um, how much a four inch water stop can resist and how much um, a 12 inch, all the way up to a 12 inch water stop they can resist. There's two factors that affect that. One is the thickness of the product and the other is the overall width. So what we're seeing is still going to be cast into the concrete, correct? Half of it's going to be cast into the first pour and it's sticking out. So in your circumstance, your contractor would have had to pour that slab, stuff that water stuff into the, the wet concrete. They call that a wet set. A lot of guys don't like doing that. Generally, most engineers don't like doing that. So what they'll instead have them do is tie it to the reinforcing steel and pull it taut and and then do your first pour fills up with concrete your slab now uh, once that cures to a state where you can strip your forms you set your wall forms on top of it fill them up with concrete real critical for your your uh, contractors in the field to properly uh, vibrate and consolidate the concrete around the water stop and this is being working in a way like the profile of this looks like <clears throat> kind of like a maybe a round piece of pipe with a long fin on either side of it. And those fins have ribs. And you're just trying Correct. to create an arduous path for water to travel around to go to beat this dam. Correct. If you look at the original water steps that came out in the 50s, they looked like dumbbells. They would have a little round bulb on each end of the water stop. And the fluid would hit the, the middle point of the water stop, hit, go around, hit that little end bulb, and it's supposed to stop. But let's just say it doesn't stop. It goes all the way around the end bulb and then goes back to the midpoint of the back of the water stop. That's your leak. Once it gets past that halfway mark, it's leaking. Um, the travel on a six-inch wide dumbbell, it takes that water six uh, 0.5 inches to get um, from the wet side to the dry side with a dumbbell. But the newer styles, the styles that you were just describing with the multiple ribs, it takes 9.3 inches of travel. And both, uh, both products are six inches wide. Those little ribs really make much more difficult for the fluids to migrate over to the non-hydraulic side. When, when do you use that as opposed to the, the hydrophilic? Felix, I have a rule of thumb with those internally. I do a lot of, of, not a lot, but I do a fair bit of consulting with engineering clientele. And my general rule of thumb is if it can affect health or human safety, I don't recommend hydrophilics. If, if it's a structure that has to be fluid proof at all times, I don't recommend hydrophilics, and here's why. You're relying on a reaction time, a chemical reaction of the polymer where it's going to get hit by water and swell up. Well, if you're doing your dishes at home and you get water on a sponge, what does it do? It puffs up, right? The water sub's going to do the same thing. However, it takes two to three days for that puffing to happen with water stops. So will your clientele be happy if it's leaking for three days and then finally it starts doing its job? So to me, you put a hydrophilic into far less demanding applications. And they're particularly good if you can put them into an application where they're always wet. That way they're always swallowing. Um, uh, swimming pool. Swimming pool. <laughs> Yeah. Or something like that. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. where they're real good. And and again, construction joints only. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about is it the key cut? Oh, they had to do something that's kind of unsafe. And they have to rip down a two by four going along longitudinally with a skill saw in order to make a key. Um formed keys help interlock the two concrete surfaces together. It looks just like a little tongue and groove. And um, 
what it does is it allows lateral movement, but it doesn't allow transverse. So that it will hold your joints together. So if your contractor's having a problem with maybe a wall bowing out on one pour uh, because of movement or seismic or whatever the case may be, if they had a key at that joint, that wouldn't happen. So keys are, are they're really good um, to have at your joints, at your construction joints. However, forming them with water setups, is, it's downright dangerous having to cut the two by fours in the manner um, that's required. So what we did was we came out with a, a nifty little product. It's called Key Cup. And what Key Cup does is it makes it so you don't have to use wood. It is just a pre-made uh, key with a little pocket, which the cup, and the pocket holds the water stop in place. Perfect center line. You fill up your first cast of concrete. When the concrete's ready, you strip your form. Your form, the key cup comes off with it. You don't even need form release. And you have a perfect key in place at the concrete on the first pour. Now you fill up your second pour, and that joint is keyed. Ah, so the part that's going in, I'm looking at the diagram on your website for the you know, four easy steps. I mean, that, that's helpful. That's it. That's it. Oh. it it's, it's shocking that it wasn't on the market already. It is sometimes when you look at something, you're like, how did somebody not make this before? I mean, it also protects your water stop and you know, it's straight, keeping it in place. It's probably good for, you know, for you, it's like, yeah, this is better, but it makes my water stop last better too. It definitely makes your structures better. Your the, the project that you'll deliver to your clientele at the end, it will exceed their wildest expectation because they're not going to have concrete panels uh, coming apart. And they happen to be fluid proof because they now have a, a water stop in the key. Ultimately, where we're going with that is we're going to have multiple size keys. Right now, we just have the one. Um, it's got a two and a quarter inch face. Um, it is designed for a nine inch and a six inch water stop. We're also going to be coming out with one soon for a four inch water stop. So we pretty much have all the water stops covered. There'll never be a 12 inch model because 12 inch water stop is like a dodo bird. It doesn't really exist. We have it in our catalogs and nobody uses it. <laughs> So a thick wall or something. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Like the foot of a dam, the you know, water, yeah, the water's coming out on the wall because the water exactly. stops. Exactly. Um, key cup has done some pretty tremendous things in a short little lifespan. We just won the most innovative concrete, uh, product, concrete accessory product at the last world of concrete, the 2024, uh, world of concrete in Vegas. So wow. I was happy. I was shocked. I didn't know we'd win. I kind of entered it on a lark and it actually won. It's always handy to have. That's you know, handy. It's good to win. I mean, yeah, it's, win, it's good to win. win. Losing almost all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so like when you think of these water stops, you know, I picture, I'm always thinking right angles, you know, it's like, okay, it's, it's floor to wall, you know, intersections, corners and stuff like that. But this is wall to wall. I mean, this is, you're putting two panels up against one another and you don't want water right. to go between them. I mean, and, uh, and it's also stabilizing those as well. So I think right. that, I think that makes sense. And I guess when you do that, do you have to form, let's say you're going to have a corner, let's say you're going up, you know, you're going across the floor and up the wall between two walls. You have to use a pre-made 90 degree. Uh, like how do you seam these water stops? Fantastic question. Um, with water stop, in order to be successful in the water stop manufacturing business, you really have to be able to see in three dimensions where you can look at a plan view and look at a sectional view and in your head, put the two things together and come out with the solution. Like in your instance, what you're describing with the, the panels on top of a slab, you would have a vertical L coming across the slab joint makes a 90 degree turn and goes up. But now you have a water stop at the slab, the top of the slab, that's going to be going, say, east-west, 
and you have to continue that joint going up the height of the wall for them. So what you really have is a four-legged fitting, um, and the bottom leg is going to have a 90 on it coming out. All water stop manufacturers um, make fittings, some better than others, um, some do more than others um, as far as helping the contractor figure it out. Um, but everybody does them. And if your contractors aren't comfortable doing them themselves, any major water stop manufacturer, in the, at least in the United States, can help them you know, with making those change of directions. Because you nailed it. it. It will leak if you don't follow all those change of directions. Because your hydrophobicity will push that water along the path. Right. It's going to get, yeah, it's going to not go across. It's going to follow yep. down. And yep. It I was a polishing out. contractor and, you know, we were polishing, we were wet polishing a floor. I didn't even realize there was a second floor under the building. I know that's something you could have, there's a whole story as a why I didn't know. You know, you pull up to a mall, you don't drive around back. Yeah. And so a lady came in and told us that we had water leaking in her ceiling. We had been working for like two days. Oh, uh, wow. Like you would have had that a long time ago. We're in the dry phases now. So I go down there. She's not under where we're working. She's not next to being under where we're working. She's four bays down. But that water had slowly worked its way down an eye beam. It's path of least resistance, whatever the path of least resistance is. Because the three spaces uh, under us were all vacant. So the water needed to find a place to do damage. It didn't want to just fall on an empty floor. Right. So it's crazy where water will go. Uh, but for you, like, how do you seam the ends of a of a of a water stop like that? Uh, the products, most modern water stops today, are manufactured with what are called thermoplastic polymers. The definition of thermoplastic means can be reshaped and reformed with the application of heat. So, it, when you come to an end of a water stop and you need to make it make that ninety degree corner. So you call the uh, the manufacturer and they ship you a bunch of 90 degree corners, factory made. Well, you still have to join that 90 degree corner to the straight run. Mm -hmm. The way you do it with the thermoplastic is you take an indirect heat source, um, generally what's called a water stop iron, and you heat it up, depending on the polymer, it's gonna go probably around 400 degrees. Um, and it varies a little by different polymers, but at 400 degrees F, you can melt anything that's out there on the market today. Um, you melt a bead, you want the bead to be three sixteenths of an inch on each side. And once you achieve that, you strip your iron and you put the two molten sides together and you have a weld. Once it cools down, it will be as strong as the parent material if you do it correctly. Um, most specifications in the United States require anywhere from 60 to 80% of the tensile strength of the polymer. The process itself is going to take a contractor about 10 minutes a weld. So if you're doing a takeoff on a job, figure yeah. 10 minutes at each and every one of those welds. And I would factor in two guys. Hmm. So last question, then I'll let you go. I'm, I'm just, you know, you started this, so this isn't really my fault. <laughs> so you stainless steel uh, water stops, sure. carbon steel water stops. I mean, um, and I worked in nuclear, and I used to. I saw a gasket made out of a stainless steel ring one time, and I was like, "Man, I don't know how tight we're making this bolt, but it must pull it down if it's going to liquefy stainless." Right. So what is? Are those still concrete applications? Are these serving as reinforcement and water stop, or or what? They are generally very special interest. Um, we do a lot of work in the chemical sector, and there is a product called LNG, liquefied natural gas. It's stored at minus 262 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is cold, so cold that if you had a plastic water stop at the joint and then the concrete moves, it would shatter. Sure. So it would actually cause the the polymer water stop to fail at when it when the joint moved. So uh, that is one e example of a good use for a stainless steel. The other would be if you have a 
uh, real high temperature, that might be something to, to look into, or very aggressive solvents, especially at elevated temperatures. Um, plastic, most of it, most of our parts have very broad spectrum resistance to a lot of chemicals. Um, stainless is really great if you're getting to the, the nasties of the nasty, methyl ethyl ketones, maybe your toluene, xylene, et cetera. Um, those type of products um, sometimes demand, depending if they're using for primary containment or secondary, um, but they sometimes demand uh, the use of a metallic water stop. Most difficult type of water stop to work with in the field, it will cost your men the most money um, in time, because instead of you utilizing carpenters on the job, you're going to have to have a licensed TIG welder. And I'll, I'll dare say it, you have to have a, a very good TIG welder because those little water stop sheets, they're really only 20 gauge thick. So mm -hmm. you, with TIG, you apply high heat and you're supposed to have a backup gas. How do you have a backup gas in the field when the wind's blowing and all this and that it's it's very difficult to put stainless steel water stops in place correctly wow so even though it's called a water stop it's it's a liquid stop i mean it's oh yeah it's a liquid stop. water in that place but i mean if you call yeah. it anything else nobody would know what the hell you're talking they about. would know what yeah yeah but that's, yeah we're gonna have a fuel stop acid stop water yeah. stop you know? catalog <laughs> just end. <laughs> That's that's why you can have a little book of water stops, not a that's huge. Right. Water stop. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! I tell you, that's fantastic. It's funny to me, you know. I love meeting people and companies, and they've got this. Um, like I'm almost reluctant to call water stop a niche. It's a it's a big niche, but it's one of these things that you ride around and you don't think about. You've seen them go in, and sure. then you know where do you use that? Nah, that's pretty cool, but Somewhere out there is a guy or a girl who is a water stop welder. You know, it's like that's their specialty. And you're like, you know, it, they probably live in a much nicer house than I and drive certainly a bigger truck um, because they got to have a welder. That's the only reason. But it's it just it's funny. You know, that's what I love about construction is there's these whether you meet a person who, hey, what do you do in construction? We mark framing with a robot. You're like, that's a job. And you're like, yeah, yeah. a well, yeah. you know, and, and, and here you are you know, kind of traversing the whole idea of forming for right. keyways and then water stop because see a problem, solve a problem. You know, it's just the nature of what we do. You got time for a, fa a funny, fast story? Absolutely. That indirect heating method. I once went out to a job site, called on the job to, to help facilitate an install. The guys were taking a spade, heating it with a blowtorch, and then putting the water stop against the heated spade. That was their indirect heat method. Uh, and then later at lunchtime, we're going to be cooking burgers on that spade as well. It's just, let's get it horizontal. Exactly. Exactly. Got a little plastic taste to them, but other than that, just fine. <laughs> that's it. No, oh, that's my, I tell you, you know, you leave them in the field, they're going to figure out a way. That's and, it. And that's um, it. just picture the water stops coming up and they're like, hmm, we'll just overlap them by two inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would... and maybe they'll even wire tie it. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, we're going to go yeah. on. Yeah. We'll zip tie these. Yeah. Or yeah. Some duct tape. I mean, duct tape fixes on a lot of the world. It, it's funny because you can specify the best water stop in the world and you can really draw up, you know, be, have a really tight specification. But where water stops fail, is always in installation. I've done this for 30 years. I've yet to see a water stop burst from high head, hypostatic head pressure, but I have seen some real doozies of failures throughout the years because of what you're talking about. People nailing them or wrapping them or not doing anything, just overlapping them. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's one of the things that's impressive about the cut that you're making and, and stuff is you know you lots of manufacturers make a great product but then they've never been there to actually put one in and they don't right. understand what the requirements are i remember when i was doing machine design they're like hey you know the cover of this the, the lid of a dryer or a wash machine has to support something like 400 pounds I'm like what in the world why would it need support 400 pounds because how many times have you seen a person standing on a wash machine to reach sure. 
Right. You're thinking that far forward, and that's what you know. Key cop sounds like is one of these things where you're out there watching them put it in, and you're like, you know what? That's not helpful. That's not safe. And there, here's you know, and, and so kudos to you for bringing something like that out. You know, it doesn't make you sell more water stops. I mean, maybe, hopefully, no, maybe, maybe but someday, but not yet. We'll, yeah, we'll find out. It does address the thing, and it says, hey, you know, we know a little bit about the actual putting in of this, so it yeah. is. So keycupform.com is that one. And yes, uh, I'm going to put a link in the uh, show notes for it. And I know, I, David, I really appreciate the time. Um, I know we had to reschedule this a couple of times, so I'm, I appreciate you bearing with me on it. And I'm glad to yeah. have you get it going. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Get the Intel. We'll see you next time. And be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes. And check us out at laminincoach.com to see how we can advance your business.